Well, there they are, the big words, now what? I, they, I probably have not had a more fitting teaching series for the time and season we're in than now what? Hi, I'm Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television. And if you have had that question roll through your mind coming through a coronavirus, if you've been confronted with a question where you're like, I don't know what I do right now. I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to go. This series is for you. Hang around. I believe you'll be blessed. I want to talk to you. Give me just a few minutes. I'm, I'm not going to take you long because, be honest with you, Proverbs is one of them books where you can't read but a chapter or two at a time and it all starts feeling like spaghetti in your head because he overloads you with so much wisdom and information, you can only process so much of it at a time. But let me give you a little bit of an introduction to Proverbs because I know uh, we've got so many people who've just gotten saved the last few weeks and so uh, our, our audience has increased about 300%. So I know we've got people that I'm not just going to depend. Everybody knows the way to navigate around that Bible and what every book is full of. Proverbs is God's mentality. Proverbs is the way that God sees life. When God sees life, he reveals it in his Proverbs. He reveals it in wisdom. A Bible says that to be wise is to be treasured among silver or gold. Uh, it is impossible to be wise and not prosper. It's impossible. If you increase in wisdom, your life is going to prosper. Wisdom and wealth go together. You can take somebody wise and take all their wealth away from them, and if they maintain their wisdom, they will rebuild that wealth. Why? Because wealth was never in their money, it was in their wisdom. And their wisdom will always create their wealth. I tell all of my, my pastors and preachers, and I try to live by this, uh, the wisdom, uh, Proverbs says that a name, a good name is to be treasured above gold and silver. I said there'll be times in your life where you will be forced to choose between your name and your money. And I said, choose your name. I said, because if you keep your name, you can always make more money. But all the money in the world will never buy you another name. Do you see what I'm talking about? So you got to understand, that's the way God looks at things. Uh, the, the Proverbs is uh, God's priority. Proverbs is the way God looks at the situation. And the Bible says that a fool rejects instruction. There is nobody in the world that you know so much, you ain't got nobody who can tell you something. So a learner is always finding a mentor and always wanting to be in an environment where people know more than them. If you are the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room and you are going to be depleted. Why? Because if you're the smartest person in the room, then everybody needs what you have in the room. So you're going to always leave that room feeling depleted. But when you can get in a room where everybody in the room is greater than you and you not feel, come on, you not feel intimidated by that, but you feel inspired by that. Some people get around greatness and they get envious and they get intimidated and they get mad and they get resentful. Whenever I got around greatness, I was always inspired by it. When I had 50 members and I was meeting in a storefront and nobody knew who I was and I walked in a building and somebody had 5,000, I wasn't mad and envious. I was inspiring and I was watching. Why? Because I knew somebody knew what they were doing. And I wanted to know what they knew. You don't have to give me what you have. Just tell me how you did it and I'll go do it myself. So I need the wisdom that you have. I don't need your money. I don't need your stuff. But would you please share with me what you know and impart your wisdom? Why? Because if you give me what you know, I'll take my energy and go do it myself. Ah, hallelujah. I said I was just going to talk about wisdom, but this thing, you can feel the passion that I have as I speak it. Life is choice driven, and life will have several defining moments. Everybody's talking about a new norm, a new norm. I don't know if there's going to be a new norm. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I do believe everybody's been affected. Um, I do believe that this will in some way change the way I look at ministry. 
I believe it may change the way I priority what's important in ministry. Uh, I know some of the things we implemented during this worked better than some of the things we were doing before it. And had this not have happened, I may have never implemented it. So I do have to get back when things begin moving back in their former direction. I'm going to have to take some time and I'm going to have to ask myself some hard questions. And I'm going to have to reevaluate some things out of wisdom. We've got to move away from just trying to live above sin. There comes a time where you outgrow that. You know, there's a, you know, when you first get saved, I'm just trying to do right, Pastor. I'm just, I'm trying to stay in the way. I'm trying to stick it out with God. It's because you're coming out of the old and you're coming into the new and breaking those chains and breaking those relationships and breaking those habits can be difficult and take some time. But there does come a time where you shouldn't get up every day just hoping you can do the right thing. Now we've got to move from the law of sin to the law of wisdom. Not is it right or wrong, but is it smart? Is it wise? Are you a wise decision maker? Why? Because you and everybody you're responsible for has to live in the fruit of your decision making. Deuteronomy 28. And if you are careful today to observe and obey all these things that I have commanded thee unto this day, all these blessings shall come upon you. Then he tells about all the blessings. You shall be the head and not the tail, above and not be. Then he said, but if you do not observe today to do and, uh, to all these things that I have commanded you, then all these curses shall come upon you. God never said, I will curse you. The curse is built in disobedience. Disobedience by its very nature, brings about a curse. Obedience, by its very nature, brings about a blessing. There is a, there is a blessing tie-in if I'll just do what God told me to do. There is a spanking that's coming my way if I choose to disobey him. God doesn't spank me. The decision spanks me. So life is choice-driven, and many times we get in a worship service, and we want God to do everything, and we want God to fix everything, and we want God to build our life. God is the architect of your life. God is not the builder. God will give you the architectural drawings, but you will have to build it. Just like he told Moses. Moses, he told Moses to build a tabernacle. He said, now go build what I showed you on the mountain. I'm going to give you the drawings on the mountain. Now you go down the mountain and start building what I showed you. God is where you go to get the architect of your life. But you're going to have to pull yourself out of your bed. Come on. Out of your bad attitude. I'm preaching now. Out of your past. Out of your hurts. Out of feeling sorry for yourself. You're going to have to pull yourself out of that. And you are going to have to go build the dream that God has put in you. You are going to have to build the vision that God has put in you. And you're going to have to do it in in spite of the naysayers, you have to do it in spite of the haters, you have to do it in spite of pandemics, and some of you that took a blow during this coronavirus, when it's over, you're going to have to reach down and pull yourself right back up and say the dream is still alive, the vision is still alive, and everything God promised me is still intact. I'm going to say that again. I am here to tell somebody the dream is still intact, the vision is still intact, and the promises of God are still intact. And everything God showed you he was going to do, he's still going to do. Excuse me. Oh, thank you, Father. I believe that for people right here in this room, and I believe it for everyone tuning in with me. Throw your hands up in the air and give God a praise in this place. Woo! Now, Proverbs 120. I've given the guys who helped me so much scripture, it may take them a moment to navigate through it. Wisdom calls aloud outside she raises her voice when you hear of the proverbs it's always spoken of in the female gender wisdom is always referred to as she don't tell your wives that when you get home they may really run away with that and you know wisdom is she hallelujah god is a he in the bible so we are given the male gender to relate to God. But we are given the female gender to relate to wisdom. you got to understand God is joined to wisdom. God is married to wisdom. God is the male 
Wisdom is the female, and they are joined together. So if wisdom incubated any seed, it would be God's seed. The wisdom in Proverbs contains the seed of God. So the things that you read in the book of wisdom, in the book of Proverbs, it is the she that is carrying the seed of God into your life. I said that wasn't deep, but that's actually some pretty deep stuff right there. <laughs> now, here's where we're going to get started in the things that I want to tell you today. The first thing in Proverbs, I want to go to verse 5, chapter 1, verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. I am believing that at least sometime within the next months, hopefully in some places in America in the next few weeks, there's going to be some movement to try to get back. I know I'm not a decision maker. I'm not a politician. I'm certainly not in the Center for Disease Control. But just... In my spirit, I believe you're going to feel some movement to try to get back. It may not be back like we knew it, but I believe some way to get back. So now what? Now what? I think the first thing you're going to have to do when you come out of this is you're going to have to stop and evaluate what you know. Number one, wisdom principle. Reevaluate what you know. Will what you knew before this happened work before you since this has happened? <laughs> I am having to sit back already and reevaluate everything that I've learned about church. Because this has taught me a lot of what I have learned is not true. I'm letting these things sink in. I'm not at a loss for words. I got plenty to say. I'm saying it slow because I want you to ponder it. Just because it worked then may not mean that it works in your future. Evaluating what you know. Life is choice driven and life will have several defining moments. We've got to move away from just trying to live above sin. Now we've got to move from the law of sin to the law of wisdom. Not is it right or wrong, but is it smart? There's a lot going on right now that is shaking our world. Ron Carpenter teaches you how to make decisions out of wisdom rather than emotions. Wherever the presence of God is, there's always the possibility for divine intervention. If I can worship God into the room, if I can praise God into the room, it's possible my economy can change, my healing can come, it's possible my prayers can be answered. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. This eight-message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. There is no way for your life to move forward if your knowledge does not increase. I have taught for years, you cannot live above the level of revelation you have. I am amazed. I am amazed. I'm amazed. At why does an addict hang out with an addict? Why do poor hang out with poor? Why do depressed hang out with depressed? Why, why, why would someone who has no money Go spend the day with someone who has no money because you both have the same information. Why would a drunk seek out another drunk? It's obvious you both know how to be drunk. Why would an addict seek out another addict? It's obvious y'all both know the same thing. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to challenge you. I'm trying to challenge you. When I pastored 100, I didn't go to circles and converses of the pastors of 100. I went to ones that pastored 1,000. When I could never afford a house, I would go around and ride around 
to the first-time buyer's houses and the, the entry-level houses, and I would dream about just owning something because I'd never owned anything in my life. And then when we finally got to the place after years of being married, we got us an entry-level house. What do we do? We started driving through other neighborhoods. I didn't drive through other neighborhoods as a hater. I drove through other neighborhoods to be inspired because I want to look. How do they manage their life? How do they talk? How do they handle themselves? What do they say? How do they think? I wanted to get into their mindset because a wise person will be ever learning. No, chapter, verse 5, chapter 1, a wise person will be ever learning. Let me give you a few scriptures right here. Uh, 3 John, verse 2. Let me give you this one. 3 John, verse 2, and then I'll go to Luke. 3 John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Prosper. I want to praise him. Say prosper. Say it loud. Say prosper. I pray that you prosper. So those of you that don't like prosperity, I'm on, you're going to have to go get some itch and some pain cream because I'm about to talk about prosperity. Why? Because God wants you to prosper. God wants you to increase. I'm not just talking about your bank account. God wants your life to be getting better, more bountiful, and more fruitful in every area. That everything that you give your energy to, it produces more than it used to because you're smarter in how you do it and you're wiser in how you do it. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. How many things? In all things. How many things? In all things. That your kids prosper, that your marriage prospers, that your home prospers, that your business prospers, that your education prospers, that your bank account prospers, that your health prospers. It is the will of God that you prosper in every area of your life that people can look at you and tell it's been touched by God. In all things, and be in health just as, in conjunction with, parallel to, your soul prospering. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. So your life prospering outly, outwardly is totally and completely tied to prospering mentally and emotionally. <laughs> if you are an emotional wreck, if you are all over the place and we don't ever know who's coming, is it Jekyll or Hyde? Prosperity will always elude you because you are so emotionally sick. You can never fix the world around you if you can't fix the world in you. <laughs> You've got to fix the chaos in you. When I get in a place and I see chaos everywhere, it is a snapshot of what's going on inside of them. People that are chaotic in here, they walk in a room and create it. They create it because they carry it. They carry chaos. There's some people so chaotic that peace is a stranger. And you put them in a peaceful room, they'll have everybody fighting. They'll have everything in drama because that is their norm. Their norm is to be chaotic. It's in them, so they create it. Well, here comes John. John said, it is the will of God that you prosper and you be touched by God in every area of your life, but it will only happen as your soul prospers. In other words, as you increase in learning and as you learn how to control your emotions, what is controlling emotions? What do you mean, Pastor? I mean you do not let it sit in the driver's seat of your decision-making. I started off this message with life is choice driven. But they are not to be made out of emotion. Because, because decisions have long term effects and emotions come and go. And you are never to make long term decisions out of short term feelings. Words are eternal. You say things while you're mad, and all of a sudden you're not mad no more because the feeling has come and gone. But what you said you're going to be dealing with in your marriage the next 10 years. Because you said something eternal out of a short-term emotion. Oh, it is the will of God that you prosper even as your soul prosper. That you reign in your emotions and you have the ability to make a decision out of wisdom and not out of what you are feeling in that moment. I'm telling you, people of God that are going to prosper and recover from this and be restored from this are going to be people that are not bitter because of it, not angry because of it, and are not quick to make a decision, but are people who have thought it out and they have looked at their options and 
and they are fun. in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. They're saying, God, I do not want to make a decision out of fear, out of anxiety, out of the tyranny of the urgent, but I want to come before you and let you know this is laid before me. What is the path you would have me to walk in? And God said, if you simply acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Is this helping anybody? I don't know. I know it's not a sermon, but it's just wisdom. So you've got to reevaluate what you know. <laughs> what do you know? 2 Timothy 3, 1, and then verse 7. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. It's debatable whether or not we're experiencing some of those times. But you've got to understand, they've been calling it the last days since Jesus left. They've been calling it the last days for 2,000 years. Okay, so let me move forward. Go to verse 7. He said, in the last days, he said, here is going to be one of the things you're going to have to watch out for. I said, reevaluate what you know. He said, people are going to be ever learning but never coming to a knowledge of the truth. It's not just about getting more information. It's about knowing what God said concerning it. So it's not about learning more about marriage. It's about what did God say about marriage and how did God say it's supposed to function. Then I don't care what pop culture says. I got to do it God's way. What does God say about money? What am I supposed to do with my money? How much of it goes to God? How much of it, how does God want me to spend it? What is the attitude in which I manage it? What does a prudent manager look like? So I've got to understand, I've got to reevaluate what I know according to the truth of God's word. So some of you that are in the reevaluation process and you're saying, now what? You got to make sure that you're now what questions you're going to the word to get them answered. Because he said, one of the trademarks of the last day, what do we call this? The information age. But people are biblically illiterate. So they are ever learning, but never coming to a knowledge of the truth. When this pandemic started, people in the church did not know how to pray. I blame that squarely on the preachers. Because you know what Jesus said? A student will become like his teacher. So if the, if the students don't know how to pray, you know what that tells me about the teacher? Okay, I'll leave it at that. Okay, a student becomes like his teacher. So nobody knew how to pray. So I sat down and made a six-minute video and said, play this in your house and let me pray over your house. It's not the student's fault that they don't know how to pray. It's the teachers who have not taught them how to pray. Do you see what I'm So we have all this information at a click, but nobody knows the truth. How can we be wise decision makers if we don't even know... Proverbs is God's mentality. How can I make wise decisions and I don't even know what God says on the topic? I don't even know what God says about the subject. So I'm going to get at the point of decision and I'm going to choke. Why? Because I don't know what God says do. Life is choice driven and life will have several defining moments. We've got to move away from just trying to live above sin. Now we've got to move from the law of sin to the law of wisdom. Not is it right or wrong, but is it smart? There's a lot going on right now that is shaking our world. Ron Carpenter teaches you how to make decisions out of wisdom rather than emotions. Wherever the presence of God is, there's always the possibility for divine intervention. If I can worship God into the room, if I can praise God into the room, it's possible my economy can change, my healing can come, it's possible my prayers can be answered. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. This eight-message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.
hope you've enjoyed that because, you know, sometimes life is not asking you a question that has a right or a wrong answer, but it's offering you a chance to be wise. The Bible says those who are wise walk with the wise, but those who says they're companion of fools, they'll be destroyed. I, <laughs> I sure don't want to be coming out of a pandemic and walking in the company of fools. I need some wisdom in my life. I hope that you're enjoying this because I really enjoy teaching it. It's a long series, but it goes really in depth about how to make sure that you're armed with wisdom when you get in these places. Defining moments always demand great decisions, and I believe most of us are in one right now. I just want to say that I've been praying for you. Um, God has put you, the covenant partners that watch, on my heart a, a little more than even usual lately, and I've been praying for you. <clears throat> I've been praying for your increase. I've been praying uh, that God would establish His covenant in meeting your needs. I've been praying for God that is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough for God to open the windows of heaven and bring you uncommon resources. And from the very beginning, I have spoken over you that there would be no losses. And even if the enemy has stolen from you during this time, God would restore it. Many fold that which is being lost. I want you to know that, that I'm praying for you. And I want you to know that your seed that you've continued to sow uh, through your gifts and through your offerings into this television ministry, I want you to know something. Never in 30 some odd years have we ever reached as many people as we're reaching right now. I just want that to sink in. So you have never given into more fertile ground than you're giving into right now. We've never had more salvations weekly than we're having right now. We've never had more reported breakthroughs, more testimonies coming in. And it is amazing that in times that are so desperate, God is showing up so mightily. And I'm grateful for that. And I want to thank you for your generous and your consistent giving. And our pledge to you is to keep taking this message to as many people as we can and represent him excellently on a consistent basis. Would you give? Would you pray and just ask God what that gift would be? Maybe you've never given before and this will be your first time, but you're being prompted to do something. You can be a monthly covenant partner and be a part of our partner. Uh, partner list team or you could just be a one-time giver it doesn't matter all I want you to do is obey God and this is our gift to you yeah we're givers too that we're going to give back for your first time gift just to say thank you I'm so grateful for what God's doing I'm so grateful for those of you who are being changed by this telecast by the word of God and I'm so grateful for those who pray and support us as well I want you to connect with me on Facebook on Twitter I want you to connect with me uh, and Instagram and all those social media venues. And if you would like to also watch us live when we do our weekend services, go to myredemption.cc or roncarpenter.com and hit I church, I groups, I prayer, I everything. We've got a whole family experience that we're giving you virtually that you can have for everyone in your family. We love you. We bless you. And until next time, I believe God's next days for you are going to be better than your last. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.